Thank you very, very much. Do you have an idol, a famous person you look up to? Depending on who you ask, different names pop up. Nelson Mandela, Greta Thunberg, Roger Federer, or Kim Kardashian. Now, I've never really had a famous role model in my life until about seven years ago. At that time, I came across a person that really impressed me, and the more I learned about this person, the more I felt inspired. And of course, you won't be surprised, that person is a pirate. Now, this pirate has a unique life story, really unique, even for a pirate. This pirate became exceptionally powerful. And to give you a clue, this pirate was born at the end of the 18th century. Now, I hope I got you thinking, you know, going through your history knowledge, who do you know? Henry Morgan, Francis Drake, maybe the notorious Blackbeard, or the famous German guy, Klaus Störtebecker. But no, it's none of those famous names. My pirate idol was actually the most powerful pirate who ever lived, and yet it's a person you will probably never have heard of. Vastly unknown, yet historically proven, documented, can be found in Wikipedia, this pirate was a woman. Yeah. The Chinese female pirate Cheng Yi Sao led not just a large group, but actually an army of pirates. At the peak of her power, she commanded a fleet of around 800 ships with a crew of around 80,000 pirates under her command. Not 18, but 80,000. This woman controlled the South China coastline at the beginning of the 19th century, and this is her story. Cheng Yi Sao was the daughter of poor farmers from the Canton region. And when she was around 13 or maybe 14 years old, her parents actually sold her to a so-called flower boat, which is a brothel. So in her early teenage years, she was forced to become a prostitute. And sadly, this was very, very common at the time for young and pretty girls from poor families. Now, that flower boat where Cheng Yi Sao lived was often visited by pirates. And one very famous pirate captain came to see her again and again, and he fell in love with her. And you guess what happened? Typical romantic story. He eventually asked her to marry him. And she said yes, but she had two conditions. First of all, she wanted to leave the brothel and live with him on his pirate ship. Very uncommon at the time. And secondly, she wanted to learn to be a good pirate herself. Now, this young woman basically negotiated a marriage contract, and she did get what she wanted. They became husband and wife. She left the brothel. She joined him on his ship. She was very eager to learn. In no time, she was an excellent pirate herself. And then, a few years into their marriage, something really unexpected happened. Her husband died. How he died, why he died, what exactly happened? It's a big mystery. <laughs> One thing is for sure, from the moment of his death, she was the pirate leader. And if you look at her name, Cheng Yi Sao, this actually means Widow Cheng, if you translate that. And under this name, she made history. Now, my fascination with her is this. The moment that she took over power, she decided to change fundamental rules of piracy, particularly for women. In her new pirate code, she determined, first of all, if men and women wanted to marry and live together on board as pirate husband and wife, they could. Also, widows were now allowed to have new partners. The times of solitude and chastity were over. And also, Widow Cheng insisted that raping women was punished with the death penalty, 
even if those women were captives. She created new societal norms based on her own experiences and values. She wrote her own rules. Bravo, Widow Cheng. And actually, not just Widow Cheng, but if you look at historic pirates, the golden age of piracy, in pirate communities, pirates established democratic structures, income transparency, equal pay, a form of health insurance, and even same-sex marriage was possible amongst historic pirates. Historic pirates had no respect for the status quo, and this is what triggers me in a truly positive way, and there's a good reason for that. 30 years ago, at the very beginning of my corporate career, I've made an experience that has left its mark on me to this day. I had a supervisor, one of my very, very first supervisors, that was a certain Mr. Fisher. Now, I was young, you know, I was open-minded, eager to learn. Mr. Fisher, <clears throat> not so much. He was in his mid-50s, very, very overly structured, pedantic. Probably you could say he was quite German in an unpleasant way. And whenever I would ask a question, I would challenge something over and over again. He would stand in front of me. He would stretch his index finger and say, we've always done it that way, Fräulein Meyer. Miss Meyer, my maiden name. And this was just burned into my memory and it had the following effect. So early in my life, I didn't really know who I wanted to be in this world, but I knew exactly who I did not want to be in this world. So eventually my little, you know, Mr. Fisher trauma led me to become a pirate myself in my very own individual way. And to this day, whenever I see an overly stretched index finger, I know one thing for sure. I will never respect the status quo. And one of my very own, you know, major going against the status quo activities happened in my mid-twenties. At the time, in my corporate career, you know, it was all about climbing the corporate ladder, making more money, making the next step. And I decided to take some time off. More than 20 years ago, I took a sabbatical. I joined an international sailing crew and I circumnavigated the world. So actually not just my mindset, but also my love for the ocean attracts me to historic pirates and seafaring rebels. But, you know, what is it exactly that makes a pirate a pirate? And I use a specific term to describe that, and that term is audacity or being audacious. Now, maybe you don't know that word. It's kind of old school. Audacity in French is l'audacité. In German, it is wagemut oder wagemutig sein. In Dutch, it is gedurft. In Finnish, it is uskala. And my favorite translation is the Hungarian. <laughs> Audacity in Hungarian is wakmerojik. <laughs> and audacity is the foundation of the pirate mindset. And I like this word so much. I've even written down my own definition. Audacity is the conscious decision that there is something more important than fear, shame, conventions, or rules. And I believe we need more audacity in today's world. Why would I think that? Well, look around you. The world is a complicated place. And what do we do? What you know, many people do all the time. We, you know, we step back, we're insecure, we're frustrated, we're trying to play it safe. And whenever I see all of those behaviors, I actually have a name for them. I call them Kodono. And a Kodono mindset is basically a very low energy version of Mr. Fisher. You know, his index finger, we've always done it that way, 
it has turned into a really resignated, it's never going to change anyway. A shrug, a deep sigh. Whew, that's Cadono. And if you're wondering what Cadono stands for, Cadono can't do nothing. And very often, People will not literally say can't do nothing, but they will disguise their Kodono message. And um, they will say things like, oh, this is too difficult. This is too complex. This is too expensive. Oh, the market is not right. My boss wouldn't understand. My wife wouldn't like that. I am too old. I am too young. I'm too this. I'm too that. Sound familiar? Hmm? We're pretty good at finding excuses when we're in a Kodono mindset. And I do that too sometimes because for all of us, it has become really difficult, you know, to, to do things right or to do the right things. And I can give you a very recent example from my own life. Just a few weeks ago, I was asked to facilitate a workshop in a company in Germany in the weapons industry. They produce ammunition, mostly large missiles for tanks, war machinery. Is it right to work there? Would you? Life is difficult. The world is difficult. How can we cope? Well, here is my idea. Let's use historic pirates as role models. Let's live by the motto, pirate up your life. Let's be audacious. It is the cure against the Kodono mindset. And in the past years, with Widow Cheng as my idol, in many difficult situations, I've asked myself this, you know, what would I do now if I was an audacious pirate? And the more I realized how practical this approach was, the more I started to use it with other people. So, you know, in coachings and in presentations and in videos and in blog articles everywhere, I've asked many different people, men and women, young and old, from different cultures, religions, backgrounds, professions. I've asked them this one very, very simple question. What would you do now if you were an audacious pirate? And to this day, I've received hundreds of answers. Susanna wrote me, I finally asked my boss for a raise. I wanted to do this for so long, never had the guts, but I did it and I got my raise. Hm. Ines, she decided to buy five cans of dog food for a homeless person she regularly sees around the corner from her apartment, sitting there with his German shepherd dog. She thought about the man very often and then she said, well, me thinking about him doesn't change anything. I need to take action. So she bought the dog food. She brought it over. He was very surprised and gave her a smile. Torsten decided to call his brother. They hadn't spoken in about five years after a really silly but also intense argument. He said, if I'm audacious, I should apologize and clear things up. It's my brother. And that's what he did. And they talked for hours. As for myself, did I facilitate that workshop in the weapons industry? Yes, I did. I thought about it and I took a firm and conscious decision to do it. And of course, I wish we would live in a world where we didn't need arms and weapons and missiles. But in this moment in time, sadly, I do think we need that. So we need people to produce these things. And of course, I do respect other opinions on this matter. I could tell you many, many, many more stories. And I've even put together a website for those stories, audacityworldmap.com or wagemutweltkarte.de, where anyone can upload their own audacity stories. But I've asked myself also this, why does this work? Why does this simple call to action, pirate up your life, why does this work so well? And I found the following explanation. Well, first of all, you know, 
A pirate is probably one of the oldest stereotypes we all know. Around the globe, we have a pretty similar image of what a pirate is. And then, of course, pirates are part of modern pop culture. You know, when you think of Jack Sparrow, don't you like that mix of, you know, cleverness and coolness and sex appeal? Hmm? So are you convinced pirate up your life? Well, let me give you one last warning. Pirate up your life means goosebumps. Audacity produces adrenaline, moments of big discomfort, moments of achievement, but also anxiety, sweat, sometimes even tears. That's the price. So what about you? And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, pirate up your life? Or, I don't know. My suggestion is very, very simple. Train your audacity every single day. And if you don't know where to start or what to do, here are some suggestions. Talk to strangers, ask why not. Support crazy ideas, help people pick up trash. Donate money, donate a lot of money. When you have the chance, challenge the status quo, particularly if you're surrounded by lots of Mr. Fishers. <laughs> ask weird questions. That's my favorite one, I like to ask weird questions. Dance and sing in public, make people laugh, celebrate success, celebrate failure, celebrate for no reason at all. Pirate Up Your Life works every single day. Audacity is actually quite simple. And it matters because I have no idea where this world is headed, but I do know one thing for sure. Conformity is not a success principle. I'll give you my pirate's word of honor. Thank you. Thank you.